Hello everyone, this is uh, quite possibly one of the best USB host updates there have been up to this point. And I give huge props to Mad Monkey with helping resolve this issue. And uh, everything is much better now and I'm going to explain this and show you it in action. This is the ability to run games on USB host with special characters. And we're going to do a little test here. I'm going to intentionally add special characters to my USB host and then we're going to test it out. So I'm going into my Hashi Games directory. And let's find a few examples of these. I know Adventure Island is one I have. I'm going to open that directory up. And I'm going to intentionally add special parentheses characters to it. Now I'm going to go inside the directory and do the exact same thing. I'm just really going to add special characters here. And I will show you the proper way to update your core set so that you can do it with special characters. Then I'm going to change my desktop file to the mirror what I just did. And I need a couple more test examples here. Let's see what else I have to work with here. See if I have any that I could find right away. Oh, Blazing Lasers. Let's do that one. For TurboGrafx-16, a great shmup game. I'll do the exact same thing. Add special characters intentionally. On the outside and on the inside. There's another bonus to today's update that you'll see in a moment here once I am done doing this setup here. And we'll do that uh, the bonus to it once I do the update of course. I mean the test update here. So we got two test examples. I need at least uh, one more test example here. I know I have the great Three Ninjas Kickback in SROM, FROM format. Let's change that one too. So when you add games via Hashi2 or Linked Export, you do not have to have them uncompressed now. You could add them as compressed. Just remember when you're adding PlayStation 1 games, Sega CD games, pretty much any CD based game, you need to have the compress option disabled. But for cartridge and uh, computer games, you could pretty much leave it enabled. And of course, arcade games are going to do the add as archive anyway, so that's not pertinent to this change. So I'm going to add this here. And this is a two for one update today. I mean, once I show you the test and what you need to change to have the special characters, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to boot in the USB host here and we're going to test out these three games real quick. Make sure they run with special characters. And I'm powering it off and powering it back on since I just added the flash drive. But we got three primary test examples here. And like I said, it's a two for one change. There's going to be a tremendous change to the core set update with this addition today. Okay, let's see it. Okay, we got three ninjas kick back the SFROM with special characters. I'm going to test it out first. And that's loaded with canoe because I am unable to pull up my uh, retroarch options. That one loaded with special characters. We're good to go. And I got two more games to test out here. We got Blazing Lasers for Turbo Graphics 16. And uh, Super Adventure Island with special characters as well. And I loaded that with special characters using the SNES 9X core. So we're good to go on that. And this is an awesome game. It didn't get the love it deserved. I mean, you have Mario, Sonic, but Super Adventure Island is an absolutely incredible game. Give it a shot. Try it out for sure. 
And we're going to touch out the final game here. Turbo Graphics 16. Blaze and Lasers. And that loaded with special characters as well. Now I'm going to switch over to the computer and explain the other thing that changes with today's update in order to enable these special characters. Okay, I'm going to my core set here. When I go to, uh, say I have my modules in Hashi 2 right now, I'm going to install extra modules. You're obviously going to have to install one of the retro arts. Don't install more than one at a time. Just install the one you want to use. You can use the one that has the FFMPAG, which is the video support. And I did a video on how to run videos, <laughs> Iron ironically enough. Then you have the smaller version that doesn't have video support. And then if you have issues with 1.70, you can go to 1.67. But you have to install one of these in order to use special characters. Without this installed, you're not going to be able to do special characters. The coding is within RetroArch now. And on top of this, the two for one here is, uh, many of you have become accustomed to using the dual cores. Well, guess what? Dual cores are no longer part of my set. The coding is now within RetroArch, the ones I just showed you. And you just have to install the normal variants of them, and you can still do the command lines, bin forward slash SNES or bin forward slash SNES 05 or 02 or 10 or 9X if you'd like to use them that way. So you still have the dual core functionality without having to choose between two separate sets of cores. So when I go into my core set update here, I'm looking through the cores here. I'm going to my SNES section where I would typically have eight SNES cores, which I've done for a while now. There are only four now. And these work with both Canoe and RetroArch. So every, all the functionality is coded into RetroArch now. It's handling the SROMs as well as the 9X for RetroArch. So with the change today, you have the SNES course cut down to just four to choose from. You can install one or all four at the same time and use the proper command lines and you could uh, make sure you install one of the updated RetroArts here. And these are all updated, just remember that. Just install one of them only and you'll be able to use special characters with USB host. So have fun guys and gals and there'll be more updates to come and this will be posted very soon.